Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 130 kilogram astronaut, including spacesuit, acquires a speed of 2.5 meters per second by pushing off with his legs from a 1700 kilogram space capsule. A, what is the change in speed of the space capsule? B, if the push lasts 0.5 seconds, what is the average force exerted by each on the other? And then as the reference frame, use the position of the capsule before the push. And then C, what is the... Sorry, my monitor turned off for a second. What is the kinetic energy of each after the push. So we're going to be solving for a bunch of things here, but first let's understand what's going on uh, before and then after the push. So we know we have our astronaut here, and we also have a space capsule, right? So we're going to call the mass of the astronaut M1 and then the mass of the space capsule M2. And then V1 is going to uh, correspond to the velocity of our astronaut here. And then V2 is going to be the velocity of the capsule. Right, and then the prime just means before, uh, after. And so, first we need to understand uh, how we're going to solve for this. So, in order to solve this problem, we're going to use the law of conservation of momentum, and basically that tells us the momentum before, or sorry, the momentum before has to be equal to the momentum after. So you can say p initial equals p final. So before the push, the momentum has to be equal to the momentum after because momentum is conserved. And so to do this, you need to know first the formula for momentum. So P equals MV. And so if we want to say the momentum before, we have to look at our isolated system, which is going to be uh, our astronaut and the space capsule. And we have, uh, we have to add up the momentum before and then set it equal to after because uh, they have to be equal to each other. So as I said, momentum is MV. So the momentum of the astronaut before would be m1 v1 and then we have to add the momentum of our uh, space capsule so m2 v2 so this would be the momentum of the system before or the total momentum and then the momentum after would just be m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime so keep in mind the masses are going to stay the same the only thing that changes is the velocities and so now that we know this system is like this right so our momentum before and after all we got to do is solve for uh, v2 prime because v2 prime is the velocity of our space capsule which is what they want us to find what is the change in speed of the space capsule so we're going to use this to solve for v2 prime but in order to do that we need all of these values so m1 m2 uh, we know those values they give them to us let me just write those down um that we are given that m1 is 130 kg right so m1 is the mass of our astronaut and then M2 is 1700 kg. So we have both those values. Uh, now we're going to determine V1, V2, and V1 prime. Uh, so think about it. Before the push, we know the astronaut's not moving. So essentially, V1 is zero. But also, the space capsule isn't moving either. So both of the velocity in the beginning, since nothing has occurred yet, their velocities are zero. And we're not, we're not given that they're moving at all. So we're just going to assume that V1 and V2 are just zero. So really, you should see if V1 is zero and V2 is zero, both of these terms are just going to go away since uh, anything multiplied by zero is just zero. Therefore, this would be zero. So we really have zero equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. And uh, we only need V1 prime now, which is basically the speed after the push. And they tell us it's going to acquire a speed of 2.5 meters per second. Therefore, V1 prime is 2.5 meters per second. And then now it's really just a matter of solving. We know M1, we know V1 prime, and we know M2. Uh, so we can just solve for V2 prime. So uh, you would just minus this from both sides, getting minus M1 V1 prime equals M2 V2 prime. And then you would just divide by the mass. So if we write this out a bit nicer, we get V2 prime equals minus M1 V1 prime over M2. And so now we just want to plug in. So minus M1, which is the mass of our astronaut, 130, times V1 prime, which is 2.5, uh, and then divide by M2, which is the mass of our space capsule, which is 1700. Cool. So plugging this in, minus 130 times 2.5, dividing by 1700, that's going to give you V2 prime equals minus 0.1911. Uh, so you can say minus 0.19 uh, 
or however you want to write it. Um, and then the units would be meters per second. So uh, keep in mind they're asking for the change in speed. So its change would be 0.19 meters per second. Uh, the negative sign, what that indicates is the direction. So uh, it's just going to indicate that it's going opposite of this one. So we basically, uh, since we chose a positive value here for the V1 prime, uh, that means this thing is going to the left, right? And then since the negative just indicates opposite that, it's going to move to the right, which makes sense. If I push this thing this way, it's going to go this way, and I'm going to go the opposite way. So your answer to the first one, uh, its change is going to be 0.19 meters per second, but just keep in mind that it's moving to the right 0.19. So that's what the negative sign is indicating. Uh, you can write that however you'd like. Just make sure uh, your teacher understands what you're doing. So uh, we'll just say V2 prime equals this right here. So that's the speed of the capsule. Um, and yeah, so that's your answer to A. Let's go ahead and move on to B. So let's look at B. So B is if the push lasts 0.5 seconds, what is the average force exerted uh, by each on the other? So we're solving for force here, and or the average force. And I know, or you should know, that the average force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. So uh, whatever the change in momentum is over how long it lasts. So they tell us how long it's lasting. Delta T, which is 0 0.500 seconds. So that's your delta T. Uh, now we need to solve for the change in momentum. So what is the change in momentum? So when we're doing this, we want to just look at an individual object. Uh, in this case, we're going to look at the astronaut, since uh, we're basically finding uh, the average force exerted by each other. So I'm pretty sure we could choose either. Um, but we're going to look at the astronaut here. So basically, uh, the change in momentum equals P times the change in velocity. So um, P times change in V. And so the reason we're actually going to do the astronaut here in uh, or the change in velocity of the astronaut is because he's the one doing the push. So that's why we have to look at his velocity and not the space capsules. But uh, change in velocity in this case would just be uh, since we're dealing with the um, astronaut, it would be P multiplied by V1 prime minus V1. So this would be the change in velocity, right? Since V1 prime is its speed after, so we're just doing after minus before. So the change in P equals, or sorry, this isn't PMV, that's my fault. I meant to write M delta V, right? Because P equals mass times velocity. So if you're doing change, uh, the m is constant, therefore the only ch thing that changes is uh, the velocity there. That was my mistake. Um, but yeah, so as I said before, it's m times v1 prime minus v1. Uh, and then it's really just a matter of plugging it in. So um, let's just plug it back in here. So f average equals m v1 prime. And so keep in mind what v1 is. It's its velocity before, which is actually just zero. So uh, if the value is zero, it's not going to change this, so it's just V1 prime. And then dividing by uh, delta T. And now we have everything, we just got to plug it in. So uh, our mass is, once again, 130. That's our astronaut uh, times its speed at the end, 2.5, dividing by uh, the change, which is 0.15. So 130 times 2.5 times 0.5. So I realized when looking back at this, I actually wrote the, uh, the wrong value. It should be 650 newtons. So 650 newtons, I think I wrote something else, but keep in mind that this is the correct answer. Um, so I'm just putting this in the middle of the video, but keep in mind for the rest of the video, it's gonna say the wrong one, but this one right here is the correct answer. Um, but yeah, so I'm just adding this in. Uh, but this, these answers are still right, but uh, yeah. So just keep in mind, this is the right answer. And whatever I wrote before or for the rest of the video is gonna be incorrect, but yeah. And then for C, we're just finding the kinetic energy of each after the push. Okay, so for that, um, basically we're just solving for kinetic energy. Uh, the formula is one half mv squared, but keep in mind we're doing it for each. So uh, we can say k of the astronaut equals one half. Uh, we're doing it with the astronaut, so v1, v1 prime squared, right? Because we're doing it after the push. And then k of the capsule is one half, m2 
v2 prime squared. So this is really just a matter of plugging in to the plugging the values in. Uh, M1, as I said before, is 130. V1 uh, prime is the speed after for the astronaut, which is 2.5. And then we have one half. Uh, I believe it's 1700. Uh, and then multiplying it by V2 prime, which was uh, what we solved for up here. So the negative sign actually doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to use 0.1912. You can use a more exact value, but it's not really going to make a difference. So plugging these in, 0. 0.5 times 130 times 2.5 squared, you will get 406.25. Since we're dealing with energy, we're using joules. 406.25 joules. That's going to be the kinetic energy of our astronaut after the push. Doing this one, we have 0. 0.5 times 1,700 times 0. 0.1912. Uh, keep in mind that value squared. And you're going to get about 31.07 joules. Uh, keep in mind these values, that value was rounded, so your answer might be a little different, but they're effectively going to be the same. So about uh, about 31.07. If you use 0.19 uh, instead of the more rounded version, you're going to get something a little different, but basically the same. So about 31 joules. This one is about 406.3 joules. Uh, you can choose it around however you'd like. Uh, but yeah, just a matter of plugging it in and then uh, just solving. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically going to be your answers to this problem, A, B, and C. Uh, all we did was use the law of conservation of momentum to solve for its velocity at the end. And then we just used this value in a couple of equations to solve for what they wanted. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your answers. And hopefully you found this uh, video useful.